These next two groups are, you can see they are sister species on this phylogenetic tree. They do not look like they would be related at all. They are the roundworms and arthropods. And you would think, wait, weren't the worms over here? Why aren't the roundworms over here? That's a really good question. And people used to think that they should be over here, but it turns out they've got a really important characteristic um, that puts them here with the arthropods. And then more recent genetic testing has shown that that is where they belong. So the nematoda are called roundworms. So we've got flatworms. Those are the platyhelminthes. We've got segmented worms, which are phylum annelida. And then we have roundworms, which are phylum nematoda. And yes, as you might have imagined, they, their bodies are round. Uh, they do have cephalization, although you can't really tell in this picture. Um, but they do have cephalization. They do have a brain. Um, and the distinguishing characteristic for them is that they have a hard cuticle. And that cuticle that acts as an exoskeleton uh, is similar to the exoskeleton of the arthropods, which is our next group. And that's why these two uh, are sister species. They both have that cuticle on the outside, that hard structure on the outside made of the same um, molecule, chitin, and uh, that puts them in the same group. So the nematodes are an incredibly um, diverse group, even though they all kind of have the same, really just worm shape. Um, some of them are free living, uh, meaning that they don't parasitize something. Uh, many are parasitic. If you've ever had pinworms, uh, that's a parasitic um, round uh, nematode. Heartworms, if, you've, if your dog or cat has ever had heartworms, that's another parasitic nematode. C. elegans, Center of Dites elegans, is a nematode that is used for a lot of research, especially into genetics, because nematodes have a very simple genome. Uh, they have a short lifespan, and they're microscopic, and so you can keep thousands of them in a fairly small space in a lab. So they're good for uh, doing genetic studies on. Uh, they do have a tube-shaped digestive system, so one end is the mouth and the other end is the anus. Um, and they do have separate sexes, so all the nematodes have separate sexes. Some of them can do asexual reproduction, uh, but they usually do uh, sexual reproduction. And uh, there's very often something to distinguish males from females. Okay, so that's the... Uh, nematodes, the next group are the arthropods. And this is uh, probably the biggest phylum. Although there are some people who dispute that. Uh, there's a group of protists that may be a larger phylum, but they're not a good phylum yet, so they don't count yet. For now, it's the arthropods. Um, arthro means joint. Poda means uh, limb or foot. So these have jointed limbs. And if you're thinking, don't all animals with limbs have jointed limbs? Yeah, but they're not quite the same. Uh, so the uh, limbs of arthropods uh, are always jointed. They have a hard exoskeleton. And then the other thing that separates them from other animals is they have these distinct body regions. In insects, it's the head, thorax, and abdomen. In some of the other groups, the head and thorax are fused together into one cephalothorax. And then the thing that you think of as the tail is actually the abdomen. So if you've ever eaten lobster tail, you are actually eating lobster abdomen. If you're thinking, ew, did I eat lobster stomach? No, the organs are in the thorax. Uh, and spiders, uh, do have a cephalothorax, and then this big part is the abdomen of the spider, okay? Um, they do have very complex, complex nervous systems. They have a brain, and then they also have uh, little mini brains around their body. So they are very, very complex animals. And I will also include this video of the mantis shrimp, which is so freaking cool. Now, uh, one thing, once we start talking about uh, aquatic arthropods. I think people start thinking that um, everything that lives in the ocean is an arthropod, especially after I talk about mantis shrimp because they're incredibly cool. Fish are not arthropods, okay? Fish are phylum chordata. They're in the same phylum that we are. 
Arthropods have a hard exoskeleton. Fish have an endoskeleton just like us. Okay. So there are a lot of things that live in the water that are arthropods, such as crabs and lobsters and uh, shrimp, um, sea spiders and a lot mantis shrimp and all kinds of things, uh, but not fish. Okay. Not octopus. Octopus are part of phylum mollusca. Uh, not eels. Those are, those are fish. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now, um, for anybody who is sensitive about spiders, I apologize for the next page, but there are a couple of spiders that I want you to know. The black widow spider uh, is actually not really uncommon in California, and it is the only spider in California that is going to harm you. Uh, except that we do have a brown widow spider that's actually non-native. It's kind of the same, still has a red spot. Um, black widow spiders, the female has this distinctive red hourglass on her abdomen, uh, except sometimes she doesn't, sometimes it's just a spot. So if it's not like the right shape, don't go, oh, you're not a black widow. Um, just leave it alone. Okay. Um, the other thing is that the black widow has these really distinctive thick legs, very, um, a big abdomen. Okay. They're also very, very shy. You will see them in corners, um, under logs. Uh, if you have to, you know, go in the corner of the garage where you've been storing some tools and nobody's gone there in a while, you might find a black widow spider. Okay. But, uh, they generally try to stay away from places where people are very often. Um, so the only way you're going to get bitten by a black widow spider is if you disturb the spider. Okay. Um, it is the only spider in California that can harm you. All spiders are venomous, but the other spiders in California, their mouth parts can't get through your skin. So you cannot be harmed by the other spiders in California. And it's really only the black widow female. The males are these little tiny things, okay? You, you probably wouldn't even notice. And they're harmless, so don't worry about the males. If you do get bitten by a black widow spider, it's going to hurt like hell immediately. Uh, your skin is going to start to swell and you do need to get to the emergency room because it is highly venomous, highly toxic, um, and can cause a systemic infection. And you can actually die from it or, you know, at the least like lose a limb. So you do need to go to the emergency room if you have been bitten by a black widow spider. You will not wake up in the morning and go, oh my gosh, I have a bug bite. I must have gotten bitten by a spider. That's not a thing. You got bitten by something else, okay? You did not get bitten by a spider because the only spider in California that's going to hurt you is the black widow. Now, before you say the next thing you're about to say, no, you did not get bitten by a brown recluse spider in the state of California because they don't live here, okay? We're over here. This is California over here. Brown recluse spiders have to have moist warm, humid environments. They cannot live in California. This is where they are found. There are other recluse spiders. They don't live here either. Also, they're called recluse because they're really freaking shy. People don't get bitten by brown recluse spiders very often. Again, they get bitten when they stick a hand somewhere that the spider is, okay? Now, you've probably seen spiders that you thought, oh my gosh, is that a brown recluse? No, it's a grass spider, okay? So this is what we have in California. We have tons of these perfectly harmless little grass spiders, okay? If you see one, just leave it alone, all right? It's just trying to eat little insects that are going to bug you, so just ignore it, okay? Just leave it alone, all right? And don't tell me that you got bitten by a brown recluse or your friend got bitten by a brown recluse. You didn't. Okay. They didn't unless they were down here. And even then it's probably something else. Brown recluse bites are really, really rare. So stop bad mouthing the spiders. Also, there are lots of cases where somebody says, oh, I got a spider bite and then it got infected. And then I got, and then I died. It was actually MRSA, which is methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's a bacterial infection that is resistant sometimes to multiple antibiotics. So what, what you died from was not the spider bite. Okay. It, it's just not a thing. It, it's just not a thing that's going to happen. Um, unless in Australia, sure, you can die from a spider bite, but not in the United States of America. Okay. If you got a bite and it got infected and then they couldn't control the infection and you die, you had MRSA. It was not the spider. So stop bad mouthing the spiders. I will stop now. <sighs> I feel fairly passionate about the spiders.
Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do echinoderms, and then I'll leave the chordates for the last section. So roundworms and arthropods are sisters, sister species. They are a sister group to the flatworms, the annelids, and the mollusks. Um, so this next group, echinoderms, are actually much more closely related to us uh, than to anything else. We're more re closely related to these, and the echinoderms are a really cool group. Um, their name means, uh, echino means spiny, derma means skin. So echinodermata means spiny skin. So they all have a, a rough um, texture on the outside created by these uh, little uh I can't think of the word, crystalline kind of structures. They are the sand dollars. This is what sand dollars look like when they're alive. And this is how they sit in the sand. Um, they grab organic material out of the water. Uh, sea stars, sea urchins, um, and uh, sea cucumbers, which hang on, I have a picture of that next. Uh, their distinguishing characteristics are that they have pentaradial symmetry, meaning that there's a central axis and identical parts are repeated five times around that axis. So one, two, three, four, five. 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 And yes, if we picked up a sand dollar, you could see there are five sections to it, okay? Uh, they also have tube feet that have little suction cups at the end, and they have what we call a water vascular system that fills and empties these tube feet so that they can stick to things and then release, and that's how the, um, that's how they move around. That's how all the echinoderms move around. So let me show you what that looks like. That looks like this. Um, so you can see these little feet down here reaching out and um, sticking and then releasing. And the water vascular system is going to fill them and then release them. Okay. Now, so these are the sea stars. Yes, they move around. They move around actually quite a lot and they are predatory. Sea stars are. These, of course, are anemones, which are part of phylum Cnidaria. Okay. All right. So that's phylum Echinodermata. No cephalization, but they do have a complex nervous system. The Cnidarians don't have cephalization and don't have a complex nervous system. They just have a nerve net. Uh, Echinodermata do have not a centralized brain, but they do have a pretty complex nervous system. Okay, so this is a sea cucumber. And if you're wondering, uh, it looks like a worm. I know it does. It looks like a fat worm. And uh, its radial symmetry is along this way. So th this is the, sorry, this is the mouth. Okay. The mouth is on the bottom of these organisms. The anus is on the top. Okay. Now imagine that you took this thing and you stretched it out into a tube. So the mouth is at one end, the anus is at the other, and the lines, the pentaradial symmetry goes around like this. And so this is that sea cucumber reaching out those mouth parts to grab sand. It's going to filter that sand and take organic matter out of that sand to eat. And then you can see the tube feet down here that it's using to walk along with. How fun is that? Right? Okay. All right. So we're going to leave it there. And in our final section, we will talk about phylum chordata.